morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning Five here on Monday, March 13th, 2017. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by the Dean of Ohio State Football Recruiting, Bill Curlick. And Bill, how about we start with Ohio State Football Recruiting? Um, what a topic. Um, let's look at some of the top prospects from the 2018 class that Ohio State is really high on and Guys, there seems to be some reciprocation. They like Ohio State as well. Let's start with Jackson Carmen, number one offensive tackle in the country, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite. He's out of Fairfield, Ohio. When will he make his decision, and do you think he'll be a Buckeye? Well, I definitely think he'll be a Buckeye. I've said that uh, for quite some time. And uh, every time I've spoken with Jackson, he's told me Ohio State is at the top of his list. And if anything, uh, their being at the top has grown um, each time he visits. Things go better and better, and, and they're squarely at the top of his list. And as far as when he decides, it's not going to be for a while unless he changes his mind. He's uh, pretty consistently, steadfastly said that he's going to go through the recruiting process, and I haven't seen any change in that either. And, and talking to his family, you know, they, they they also want him to go through the process to uh, make his evaluations and all. But when he does, in the end, I, I look for him to be a Buckeye. Teron Vincent, number one defensive tackle in the country. He goes to IMG Academy. Um, same question. Do you think he'll be a Buckeye, and when will Teron Vincent make his decision? That one's a little tougher to, to, to be so sure on. You know, I think it is a pretty close battle between Ohio State and Florida State, and his most recent visit to Florida State uh, really helped the Seminoles' cause. But uh, he, he is still going to take the visit to Ohio State. It'll be during his spring break, which starts uh, March 18th and goes for two weeks. Sometime in that period, he will make the Ohio State visit. It will be with, with both of his parents. And he told me that this is a very important visit. His de- decision is down to Ohio State or Florida State. And how things go on that visit are, are going to play a huge part in his decision. And that's why I'm going to stay with the Buckeyes, because uh, when they get a prospect on campus that they really, really want, and there's a strong mutual interest, their track record is really good. And I just think that uh, providing he doesn't make another visit back to Florida State, which nothing is planned right now, providing he doesn't do that, I like a high State's chances of convincing him to be a Buckeye. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Buckeyes still. And Jaden Woodby has obviously already committed to the Buckeyes verbally, uh, number three safety in the country at a St. John Bosco in Bellflower, California. But I'm hearing that he is still looking around a little bit. Just tell the listeners what they need to know about Jaden Woodby. You think he's a solid commit to Ohio State, or is there some concern there? Well, he says he's a solid commit. Uh, he says he's 100%, but he also, uh, I, I don't think, is averse to uh, at least listening to other schools. You know, it remains to be seen if and when he visits, actually visits other schools. Um, I, I, if I had to predict right now, I, I think he does stay with Ohio State, but I also think um, it's going to be a process that he's going to continue to get recruited because he is so good, and you know, I, I think he will listen. But I will go with him staying with Ohio State in the end. Dallas Gant is the number five outside linebacker in the country. He's out of St. John's Jesuit in Toledo. Um, what's the latest with Dallas Gant? Do you think he'll be a Buckeye, and when will he make his decision? Well, he's uh, continuing to evaluate schools. In the end, I think it's going to likely come down to one of three schools. I think Ohio State obviously is going to be one of the schools uh, that will be in it to the end. I also think Penn State is going to be there, and I think Notre Dame will be there. I think that will be the three that his decision ultimately comes down to. Uh, as far as when, I think the decision is going to come sometime this summer. Um, not out of the question he could pull the trigger earlier than that, but I think he'll take this enough time to get at least into the summer to evaluate schools and then make a decision. As far as where he goes, right now I, I think it's extremely close. I think if, if I had to make a prediction right now, I would go with Ohio State. But, again, he's still evaluating those schools, and, and uh, I think he could go a different direction. But right now I'm going to go with the Buckeyes in that one. Five more kids I want to ask you about, then we'll unfortunately move on to basketball. Um, Christopher Oates is the number 11 outside linebacker in the country. He's out of Cincinnati, Winton Woods. Um, same question, Bill. When will uh, he decide, and do you think he'll be a Buckeye? Yeah, I do think he'll be a Buckeye. As long as the Ohio State pushes for him, and I think they will, I think he'll be a Buckeye. He's another one like Jackson Carmen that from the beginning has told me that Ohio State is at the top of his list. And, you know, another uh, interesting sidelight to Chris Rhodes, you know, people sometimes I think um, don't realize just how good he is. Um, 
they forget how early Ohio State offered him. You know, they, they offered him very early in the process. Uh, they offered him, for instance, before Dallas Gant, and Dallas Gant is outstanding. Um, he was one of the prospects in state, the 2018 Ohioans, that the Buckeyes offered the earliest. So uh, at six foot four and 215 pounds and with a lot of growth potential, I think Crystal Rose has got a chance to be a very good player at the, at the next level. And I do think, as I mentioned, he will be a Buckeye. Sounds like the Buckeyes are doing well in Cincinnati. That's good to hear. Let me ask you about another Cincinnati kid, Aeneas Hawkins out of Moeller, number 30 defensive tackle in the country, although he might be a little underrated there. Um, what's going to happen with Aeneas Hawkins? Do you think he'll be a Buckeye, and when is he going to make his decision? I wouldn't be surprised if his decision came down to three schools as well, uh, the three schools being Ohio State, uh, Penn State, and Cincinnati. That wouldn't shock me if his decision came down to those three schools, although he, he is still considering other schools. And he has, uh, I believe, 30, 31 scholarship offers now, so he has a lot of schools he can consider. Right now, Aeneas is saying that he is going to stay with his May decision, May announcement. Uh, there is no chance, as he mentioned, that he could push it back. If, uh, if he's not fully ready uh, to announce his decision on May 10th, then he'll push it back. But right now he is planning to stay with that May 10th date to announce. Um, he is planning to get to Ohio State again, and that's huge. As long as Ohio State really pushes for his services, I tend to like the Buckeyes' chances. But one thing uh, that's interesting is that Ohio State is in pretty darn good shape with defensive tackles. If they lay in Teron Vincent, for instance, um, Aeneas Hawkins is out there, and then there are a number of others that they are in on. So, they are in pretty good shape with defensive tackles if, in fact, they can get Teron Vincent in the fold. So uh, with Aeneas Hawkins, as I also wrote in what I am hearing on Sunday night, uh, Ohio State is also talking about him as being able to play the five technique. In other words, uh, he could line up as a three technique as a defensive tackle, but he has the flexibility to move outside and play a five technique over the defensive end. So uh, that, that also is in, in his favor as far as Ohio State, that he could play more than one position on the Buckeyes' defensive line. Let's stay in southwest Ohio, but go a little bit up Interstate 75 to Dayton. Dayton Dunbar, Tavion Thomas, 26th rated running back in the country, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite. Again, I think he's underrated. Um, what's the latest with Tavion Thomas? Do you think he'll be a Buckeye, and when do you think he'll make his decision? I think mean, as long as he takes care of everything for the NCAA clearinghouse, I think there's a good chance he'll be a Buckeye. Uh, he is highly considering some other schools. He really liked his visit, uh, recent visit to Alabama. That went very well. He's going to visit, uh, Michigan. He's going to visit some others. He'll be back to Ohio State this spring. But, uh, yeah, he, you mentioned, Dave, that, uh, his ranking right now, and that ranking is rising. You know, he, at one point, uh, say a few months ago, he wasn't rated as high as he is right now. And I think that ranking will continue. To, to go up. He's, he's an outstanding big back. I think, again, he just needs to take care of everything um, as far as making sure uh, he's ready for the NCAA Clearinghouse. As long as he does that, yeah, I think he there's a pretty good chance he will be a Buckeye. He's another one that I would go with Ohio State at this point. Let's go out of state now for the last couple kids. The number one safety in the country, B.J. Foster, out of Angleton, Texas. Uh, what's the latest with him? Do you think he'll be a Buckeye, and when do you think he'll make his decision? Uh, that's going to be a tough one. I, I, uh, I think he's, you know, he is considering Ohio State, and certainly he's a tremendous prospect. But, uh, and you go with Ohio State's track record from this past season in Texas, and it was outstanding. Obviously, they, 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 uh, they hit not only a home run, but a grand slam in the state of Texas for 2017, landing three of the top six prospects in Texas. Duplicating that success is going to be very, very difficult, and I think it will be uh, difficult getting B.J. Foster. I, I would go with him going elsewhere at this point. I bet Tom Herman's going to end up with a outstanding class. I don't know if he's going to have B.J. Foster, but I bet uh, in the end that 2018 Texas class is going to be outstanding. Uh, last kid I want to ask you about, Matthew Jones from the pipeline of Erasmus Hall in Brooklyn, New York. That's right, I said it, the Erasmus Hall pipeline. Hey, there's been two from that school that have committed to Ohio State, of course, with Jason Wint and someone named Curtis Samuel. Uh, Matthew Jones ranked as the number three defensive tackle in the country. Do you think he'll be a Buckeye, and when will Matthew Jones make his decision, Bill? Well, he's another guy that, uh, that Ohio State's in pretty good shape with early on. Far from a done deal. You know, he's highly considering Ohio State and uh, – 
Penn State is, is up there on his list, Clemson, Alabama, Georgia. You know, I think his decision will likely come from one of those schools, but he's already been to Ohio State uh, three times. Um, you know, he feels comfortable at Ohio State, so that's in the Buckeyes' favor. And interestingly, too, while he is an outstanding defensive tackle, and we've talked about being the Buckeyes being in good shape overall at defensive tackle with the class of 2018, he's actually getting recruited by Ohio State as an offensive lineman. And, uh, uh, again, he's another kid that if I was making a prediction on right now, I would go with Ohio State for Matthew Jones. Okay, now unfortunately let's talk some Ohio State basketball. I hear everybody turning off the podcast right now. Um, (laughs) The Buckeyes didn't even make the NIT. Um, I think everybody might have saw that last night and assumed, oh, Ohio State probably told the NIT they weren't interested, and Ohio State might might have turned down the invite before it was released. No, Ohio State did not turn down any invite. (laughs) They were one of the first two out, according to the, the committee chair of the NIT, and the NIT also said no teams turned down an invite. So let's make that clear. Ohio State did not turn down the invite. They just did not make the NIT. I mean, I... I never thought we'd get to this point. I mean, this is below rock bottom. I don't even know how to describe this, Bill. Just um, talk me off the ledge here, man. I've been a big, fat, modded guy, but this just disgusts me. They're not, they're not even good enough to make the NIT. Well, I think it puts a lot of pressure on next season. I think they've got to come through. And um, uh, obviously, you know, we, Dave, you know that with the Trevor Thompson the, declaring for the NBA draft, that doesn't mean that he's going to be in the draft. He had declared for it last year, of course. Uh, it came back to Ohio State, so you never know, but I think, you know, I get the feeling that he's going to stay with it this time, and, and he will not be back to Ohio State, and uh, to be honest, I think he'll be probably playing in Europe, but we'll see. In any event, it doesn't matter if he's in the NBA or Europe or wherever, if he's not at Ohio State, it's going to be tougher for the Buckeyes, because I, I, you know, he did make tremendous improvements this year. I, I think had, you know, if by chance he did come back with the other players they have coming back, and K to Bates, Diop, and, and the new guys coming in, I think they'd be set up to, to improve on this season. But w- without him, it's going to be tougher. And you, you just got to kind of wonder, you know, where the program goes. If, if they don't make the NCAA tournament next year, you know, I, I think that's going to be, you know, a, a situation that, that's going to put Thad Mata in a bad position. And, and like you, Dave, I've been a Thad Mata uh, fan, I think he's done great things for Ohio State, but you look at the empty seats in the shot right now this, this past season, and it's kind of hard to uh, ignore. Great stuff as always from the Dean of Ohio State Football Recruiting, Bill Curlick. Thank you very much, Bill, and thanks to all the listeners out there for tuning into the show. I appreciate it. Hope you have a great day. Let's hear some Buckeye swag, Beth Dan Bandon Land. Mm-hmm.